In 2006, Dr. Carl Dweck, a psychologist from Stanford University, published Mindset, A New Psychology of Success, in which he demonstrated the crucial role that attitude played in our lives. More specifically, her book explained how success was hinged on having a mindset that was focused on growth. Dr. Dweck's work sent shockwaves across the world, with countless industries and professions immediately applying her ideas to their daily operations. Recent years have also seen this work increasingly applied to sport, where coaches and even parents themselves made use of them to encourage players to be better. So how exactly can you, as a football coach, use growth mindset to improve your coaching and your team? In today's episode of Football Mindset and Leadership, we'll take a deep dive into growth mindset, how it differs from fixed mindset and how it can be implied in ways you coach your players daily and in a team situation. So what's the difference between a growth and a fixed mindset? Well, before anything else, it's important to understand the difference between the two different mindset that Dr. Dweck presented in her book. According to her, a fixed mindset was the attitude of assuming everything was about oneself and it's static and you will never be subject to any um, significant or, or valuable change around it. And because of this, the kind of success you enjoy is taken to be an assessment of the skills and intelligence you already have. In the simplest of terms, a fixed mindset means believing that you can only reach a certain point of success because your inherent abilities, your inborn abilities, are only capable of taking you so far. Unfortunately, this attitude leads to even more stagnation. Rather than seek out challenges and opportunities for growth, you can simply stay rooted to where you are, content with staying inside your comfort zone, where you can avoid failure at all costs. But this bid to avoid failure translates to also avoiding greater heights of success. On the other hand, a growth mindset thrives on uncertainty and challenge. For someone with that attitude, failure isn't proof of their lack of intelligence or skills, but rather a stepping stone for growth. More than that, though, it represents an opportunity to cultivate your inherent qualities, the qualities that you are born with, but expand these current abilities, which allows you to grow and enrich your life, ultimately enabling them to attain levels of success they had never thought possible. I'll quote Dr. Dweck. To people with this mindset, believe that anyone can do anything, that anyone has the proper motivation or education that can become Einstein or Beethoven. No, but they believe that a person's true potential is unknown and unknowable. That it's impossible to foresee what can be accomplished with years of passion, toil and training. That's the the end of Dr. Dweck's quote there. So what if we apply a growth mindset to football coaching? Well, as compelling as Dr. Dweck's ideas are, they may, may come across as abstract to some coaches or a bit too theoretical when we look through the lens of coaching and football. But picture this. Pretend that one of your players is a natural in the field, able to instinctively tell where the ball is going how his uh, starting position is the best and he positions himself in order to intercept the ball from the opponents. Every single time the ball is passed to him, he gets through, he breaks through on goal and puts your team in the lead. Because of his strength and innate talent, you put him as a striker in every game that your team plays. You tell yourself that this is for the common good of the team, that him in this position is the best possible strategy. One that will allow your team to emerge as the victors and dominate the rest of the competition. But despite your good intentions, your decision to always put this particular player as a striker demonstrate a fixed mindset. Not only may you inhibit his skills, but you may also prevent the rest of the team from improving and honing their own abilities on the field. Basically, you might ignore their effort and the countless hours they've put into training, rendering all that useless to themselves. 
a fixed mindset all isn't always just exhibited in the strategies that you introduce though. In fact, this in, this attitude can also manifest itself in ways that you interact with your teams. For instance, telling a promising player that he's a natural and he's definitely going to be the next Cristiano Ronaldo or even Messi is akin to telling him that you think there isn't any room for either growth or improvement. What you're telling him is that he's reached the pinnacle of his skills and that aspiring to go beyond his natural limits will prove futile. So in these scenarios, how can a coach demonstrate a growth mindset? Well, from that first example, a coach focused on growth and development will... For the first example, a coach focused on growth and development will allow every single member of his team to play diff different positions. So they might kind of rotate and everyone gets a shot at playing a striker or a defender or a midfield and so on. But more importantly, the coach will constantly encourage his players to apply whatever they've, they've learned through, during training to the actual game itself. Even if they aren't sure, they'll be able to pull it off perfectly the, the first time round. They might get it to second or third. From the second example, a coach with a gross growth mindset will not only affirm a promising player, but will let them know they'll be given more challenges du du during training so they can improve their skills even more. Dr. Dweck sums it up nicely when she said that it's better to communicate to others with the message that you are developing and I'm interested in your developing development rather than these are your permanent traits and I'm judging you. We all like to think that we exhibit a growth mindset, especially if our team consists of very young but promising players. But in reality, we how we talk and how we interact into, um, can be subconsciously demonstrating a fixed mindset which inadvertently trickles down to them and their attitude. Before long, the players themselves begin to perceive their ability through a fixed mindset as well. So what's the importance of developing a growth mindset as a football coach? Well, developing a growth mindset may sound difficult. However, doing so absolutely is non-negotiable these days, given the realities of a modern football, and especially modern youth football. Today's top teams are characterised by their flexibilities. Players are able to adapt their tactical approach multiple times in the course of a game, allowing them to quickly move and effectively implement solutions to the challenges that they're facing on the park. Simply put, they thrive amid the uncertainty of the game because they can think on their feet. You know, they play what they see. Now, these, play, these types of players and teams are formed by coaches who would exhibit a growth mindset because their training encourages them to constantly embrace change and opportunity rather than take comfort in the skills that they already have. They instead see the inherent abilities as the first step to achieving so much more. According to the Applied um, Soccer Athlete website, young players will face several challenges, setbacks and adversities as they progress in the game. A major factor whether they will succeed at the highest level will be determined by their mindset. Success in sport requires a strong desire to always strive for excellence and have an open mind to constantly learn and improve skills and an, uh, an ability to positively deal with mistakes and setbacks. End of the quote. To add to that, the coaches' attitudes and beliefs often trick and trickle down to their players, which means that if you have a growth mindset, then it's likely that every member of the team will develop it too. For many, a growth mindset in an athlete is crucial. In addition to perceiving feedback, criticism and the losses as a springboard for improvement, they also aren't afraid to shy away from hard work because they believe that this is the only way to fine-tune their skills. In contrast, an athlete with a fixed mindset is someone who is content in what they've got already in their inherent ability. They often avoid challenges and opportunities due to the crippling fear of failure and how it will look. 
They're also easily frustrated when they're criticised and of, often feel threatened by the success of a team maker or others. To quote Dr Susan Sharpcott, the director of Sports Query, a person who exhibits a growth mindset tends to be hardworking and consistently looking to learn. This leads to a calmer, more open-minded athlete who is more easily coached. In contrast, a person and a footballer with a fixed mindset tends to be more emotional and is constantly trying to regulate himself or herself, end of quote. Basically, and this is really important, a footballer or an athlete with a growth mindset is coachable, while one with a fixed mindset is likely to be more towards the uncoachable level of the spectrum. A growth mindset ex is exhibited by many of the world's top footballers. For me, the greatest example would be Cristiano Ronaldo, who is widely regarded as one of the best athletes of all time and is also cited as saying, quote, I feel an endless need to improve, to learn, to evolve, not only to please the coach and the fans, but to feel satisfied with myself, end of quote. Well, nothing says growth mindset more than that quote. So how do you develop a growth mindset? Well, considering all the advantages that a growth mindset brings to a team and the game that they're going to play, it's safe to say that this type of attitude must be developed by a coach. So how exactly can you achieve a growth mindset? Well, for starters, listening plays a crucial role in coaching. And that is why you need to learn how to genuinely and actively listen to the needs of your players, understanding their strengths and their weaknesses and the areas they're struggling in will help help you present them with opportunities that will improve them or even actually eliminate some of the issues they're dealing with. In contrast to this with a coach with a fixed mindset, tend to have a narrower scope of vision which prevents them considering the needs of every member of the team. Instead, they will remain fixated on their own standards of success or the team's previous victories, which could inhibit, inhibit the potential for growth. Additionally, keep in mind that players are looking for you for guidance. And the only way that you can provide advice that is relevant to them is by listening to what, listen to what they're looking for. Putting an emphasis on effort rather than on just achievement is also important if the coach wants to um, develop a growth mindset. By praising the time and effort that your players put into the training, you will enhance their intrinsic motivation to improve on their current abilities. In fact, research has shown that praising effort has a long-lasting impact on people and players. A study conducted by the Golden Medal Labor uh, Laboratory at the University of Chicago, Department of Psychology, demonstrated that children between the age of two and three are more likely to have a growth mindset five years later when praised for their effort. With this in mind, it's clear that a football coach shouldn't only highlight a player's success, but also the effort they put into reaching that success, and that's really important. So it doesn't mean you don't praise success, but you also praise the effort into they've put into reaching that success. And lastly, to develop growth mindset as a coach, you also need to set high standards for your team. While this might come across as the antithesis of the ideas espoused by this attitude, it actually helps motivate your team to surpass their current abilities. In 2012, a study issued by the Northumbria University over here in the United Kingdom, researchers tasked participants with cycling as hard as they could for 4,000 metres. Afterwards, they were asked to race again, but this time against an avatar that was their previous ride. What the participants didn't know, though, was the avatar that they were racing against was actually going much faster than they had originally. Because of this, they were able to go significantly farther than the distance produced by their previous maximal efforts. The result of the study indicate that people can't really predict what the outcome of their best efforts can be. And because of this, they may surpass their own limits and their own expectations of themselves, but only if they're pushed. So, in conclusion, 
We all know football is an incredibly tough and fierce game, to the point that some coaches forget that the spirit of the game lies within the players, right, and not in the actual kind of victory themselves. Because of this, having a growth mindset as a football coach is a, is a must, in the youth game in particular. Not only will it help ensure that your players are developed to the best of their ability, but it will also enable them to perceive the game as an opportunity for learning, rather than just something that has to be achieved. So, the paradox is, we get the victories through the effort and the dedication and the intrinsic motivation of the individuals and the teams. So, we've had some um, incredible sources and material now on the uh, growth mindset and if you're wanting to look any further into it I would really recommend uh, Carl Dweck's book on mindset which has been updated as well and there's some great other um, material over there. I took out a book a few years ago called Talent Unlimited and that looked a lot at growth mindset not just in football but in life in general and it was targeted at for parents or teachers or coaches looking to work at uh, with youth players or youth in general. So I hope you have enjoyed this podcast. We've been talking about growth mindset and I look forward to catching up with you in the next episode. So have a good day.